guys, welcome to this video. Will Sebastian here from The Trading Mentor. Don't forget, if you're serious about trading, you want results, come and join the winners, come and join people who actually do the job and will teach you for two or three hours a day live on Zoom. That's us. Go underneath the video and get in touch. You can start for free. So the Euro Yen, what are we looking at? Well, a sustained up move that differs from a couple of Yen pairs. The reason why, of course, is because the efforts of the Bank of Japan have not been significant enough. There isn't enough sentiment bias reflected um, into the Japanese yen. Of course, if there was, then things would look slightly differently. You would get yen strength and this asset would pull down. But you don't have that because you've still got high rates in the eurozone. There isn't cutting just yet. A little bit of a mixed bag from the Fed as well in terms of waiting for data to decide whether to cut came across yesterday. And of course, the eurozone sticks with the US in some ways, um, as does much of the world. Uh, you had a couple of changes from anti padean assets across the board yesterday, which is a little bit of a difference. Um, but mostly the trajectory with this is still up. Now, what's significant here is that although it remains a technical short, I would just be a little bit wary of the fact that you're returning straight to these previous highs. If you look where I've drawn these two arrows, You've got pivot points, you've got areas where short entries have rushed into the market and the market therefore has fallen like that. So you had a bit of sentiment bias for the yen there. Then you had a bit more here as you had a rate hike talk in the Bank of Japan, but they only put rates up very, very, very slightly. So it didn't do an awful lot. The rates are still high in the Eurozone. So that's why you've got this persistent up move. If you were expecting it to fall tomorrow, um, on that sentiment, it's much less likely. You would need something far stronger from the Bank of Japan. They floated the idea of um, uh, intervention, okay, buying yen, strengthening the yen, dropping it against its camp parties because they don't want it low. They don't want it extremely weak forever. Uh, because of the way this is going sentiment-wise and the way it's approaching those highs, I wouldn't be shocked if you get up here. I do still like it for a technical short at this point there. But I would do so with lower risk because the momentum is pushing against you, the sentiment is pushing against you, and these highs are not particularly strong, and you've somewhat got level decay. What particularly scares me is the fact that after you'd fallen from here on that light rhetoric from the Bank of Japan, the fall just took you to your earliest MAs and you're straight back up. So remember, what is that telling you? Well, that's telling you there is strength in this yet. It's telling you that it's still willing to go further. Now, whether you get intervention here or much higher up is debatable, but all you can do is judge it on the face of risk. Where is the um, best value short uh, and what is the given current risk of the market? Well, the current risk, like I said, is momentum pushing against you, sentiment pushing against you because rates are still high and there's nothing considerable that's come over the wires in the last week or so. So therefore, if you were going to short here, I would do it live with the expectation that you could easily go higher. I certainly wouldn't buy because it's just too high up on the long term. You're not going to get value at this point. Go in your monthly and it's ridiculously high. What is great about this is that you're pushing into this key level here where you previously got flattened. Okay, in the financial crisis, everyone rushed to the yens and dropped the euro and whack, it comes down. Now, this is still a level that's very valid because you've got key price action over here in many cases. So what I can also see on the monthly is this candle wick formally is doing nothing. And therefore, that's why I wouldn't be shocked if you do get slightly higher on your yens and you appreciate 167 or somewhere like that. So, I mean, it's fine to hold off shorts if you want to, but just be wary. You know, you could get a bigger fall um, on any kind of change in rhetoric immediately across the news. You know, if you had some kind of change from the Bank of Japan or the Eurozone, that's what would do it. It would probably be the case that it's going to be the Bank of Japan if you get a vicious fall. Uh, nonetheless, that would take you to early key uh, price action, early key moving averages. So lots of technical uh, bias here, technical confluence factors, which is fantastic. Um, and at that point, you could consider getting long and starting to scale in. But it would pro be probable that at this point, the sentiment would then be against you like it would be now if you're shorting. So you would scale in light and then you would continue your venture to the long side as you reach further MAs 
and as you've got more uh, technical confluence, because that is where you're going to find market value or value on your trades. If you know, if you think about buying anything, you're always going to do it at value, and doing it really high up is not at value, okay? Because you've not had a retracement. Your retracement is like two percent off the previous high. It's ridiculously high to buy. So I certainly wouldn't do that if I were you. I would certainly keep your eyes across the wires for market sentiment. We'll be covering the euro yen uh, live in the trading room, um, maybe today or across the week. Don't forget, you can come and learn from us two or three hours a day live on Zoom. We will teach you everything we know. Hopefully see you on board. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.